My grandfather risked his life to help the British war effort so that we can all enjoy the freedoms we have today. Curious, then, that at one point in my life, I should have worked to undermine the very freedoms and beliefs that he fought for. I used to be a member of the radical Islamist group Hizb al-Tahrir. Like many young Muslims, I believed British Muslims should not vote, that the deaths of British troops in Iraq were to be celebrated, and that any integration was categorically wrong. This came from the doctrine of political Islam, where Islam is seen as a political ideology and not just a religion. It was our duty to impose the Sharia, Islamic law, over the entire world. The problem with political Islam is that it's an ideology that's based on anger, on hatred, on violence. It's something that cannot exist without having an enemy to fight. And the problem in the UK is that there's a victim mentality that's been created between Britain and Muslims, and that's a real problem for us. From a normal first-year student at university, I was to become a solemn Islamist writing articles which frequently attacked the West. The obligation is jihad! In November 2004, I was in the angry crowd demonstrating against the Iraq war at Regent's Park Mosque in London. It was the night of the Fallujah offensive. Inside the mosque, the community prayed, but outside, we were far more vocal. Are you going to side with George Bush, with the Kafir, with the Murtad leaders of the Middle East and Asia? Today, things are quieter, and so am I. When I think back to what radicalized me, it was September the 11th, 2001. George Bush was saying, you are either with us or against us. The members of Hizb al-Tahrir at my local mosque said this would be the start of a war in Islam. Their arguments were well presented and convincing. Radicalization and recruitment has been taking place at mosques and university Islamic societies for almost two decades now. Mosques in particular have been targeted by political Islamists who want to promote their radical theology and confrontational worldview. And mosques have been unable to fight back. Regent's Park Mosque has battled the hardliners, but many other mosques have been left powerless. It centers on the way they're run. Crucially, mosque leaders have failed to develop a theological response to radical and literal interpretations of the Quran. Instead, they've simply disowned the problem by banning political discussion outright. They're scared of confronting the extremists, but it means they've lost the ability to influence debate. 7-7 Seven -seven ringleader Muhammad Sadiq Khan even mocked the country's mosque leaders in his suicide video. Our so-called scholars today are content with their Toyotas and semi-detached houses. They seem to think their responsibilities lie in pleasing the kuffar instead of Allah. So they tell us ludicrous things like you must obey the law of the land. SubhanAllah, how on earth did we conquer lands in the past if we were to obey by this, by this law? By Allah, these scholars will be brought to account. The London bombings confirmed my growing fears about the dangers of my own Islamist beliefs. I became convinced that ultimately they were feeding into and even motivating acts of terror. I realized I had to leave. Oh my gosh. The point was reinforced again just last month when it transpired that two of my closest friends from my radical days, Bilal Abdullah, and Kafil Ahmed were allegedly behind the plot to attack Glasgow Airport. The apathy of the mosques may contribute to the problem, but what is it that fundamentally inspires such hatred? Foreign policy is not the root cause of the terrorism, the extremism we find in the UK. Foreign policy is a catalyst, it's just as there are many other catalysts. The root cause of why somebody would want to go and blow themselves up is theology and ideology. Somebody is teaching them that it is justified and also a good thing for them to do so that they can help their brothers and sisters around the world. But the idea that the ideology of political Islam is to blame for violence is only accepted by a small proportion of Muslims. What worries me is that when we see something like 7-7, which is being condemned by Muslim groups, but then it's very quickly followed by the but caveat to say, but it's all about Iraq. We need to get away from that. We need to objectively, what happened on 7-7 is just wrong. But I find it almost incredible in that the reason why it happened 
is obviously foreign policy. The man behind it is claiming that it's foreign policy. I hear the argument by, by many people, including yourself, that there is some form of ideology behind it. Of course there is. Look, and, and I'm not disagreeing with that. But in the history of the world, whenever there is an extreme oppression against people, an ideology will form and harden. Right. Yeah, and that ideology will say that look, you are being murdered. The only way to stop that is X, Y, Z. So the root is foreign policy, and the ideology springs from that. Are you with me? So let's just take. I was. I, I would argue that the actual converse is true here. That we There's no historical heard... precedent. Okay. Guys who sowed the seeds of modern British Islamism in this country come here in the late 80s, early 90s, mm -hmm. right? And those ideas. And you know this as well as I do, were, were, were formed here in, that, in the sense that people were recruited to these groups throughout that period, right? Long before Iraq war, long before 9-11, long before all of any of this happened, no, right? Agree. Most people think Islam, politically, is only concerned with the rights of Muslims and nobody else. That Islam divides the world only along lines of saying, we're believers and you're infidels yeah. and that's how we see it in a bipolar fashion. Because that's the way the debate has been hijacked. Look, I'm with you, I'm with you. The problem here is this. If someone who is not of that ilk and does not believe in that type of political Islam but is still politicised because of, you know, passionate uh, about what's going on abroad or even here, if he goes anywhere in this country to any mosque, pretty much, you know as well as I do, he will be kicked out and told to go somewhere else because they're not interested. The problem with that is, then where do they go? They've got to fall into, into those arms. Absolutely. And once again, you know, the condemnation of our leaders cannot be hard enough and the, the failure of our community to hold them accountable for that, as perhaps men like you are doing now, right, uh, um, has, uh, is simply not existed. And that's what's wrong. There's no accountability at all within our community. In the battle against radical Islam, I believe the onus of responsibility must rest with Muslims. We need to challenge the extremist culture that exists within our community and mosque leaders need to develop a response to the radical theology without being afraid to face down the extremists. I'm no longer a part of Hizb al-Tahrir. I found that the culture of political Islam just results in violent extremism far too often. And for thousands of young British Muslims, I think it's a political culture which essentially results in isolation and confrontation. I don't want to be part of that.